Live from the BDN Studios, it's Bang and Dang. That's awesome. If you don't like that, then you ain't black. Welcome back to Outlaws, Gunslingers, hosts are Bang and Dang, coming back at you with another... Well, you guys get a treat this week, or this month as well, guys, because according to my schedule here, it says, if I'm not mistaken, you guys get... A total of uh, one, two, three, four. Wait, no, one, two. Yeah, a total of four true crime episodes this month. Which obviously this would be the fourth one. Usually there's only three plus our uh, mafia one. So because right, there's five weeks in January, right? But there's also five weeks in every month. Well, there's only four weeks in February. There's five weeks here. Just depends on when that Tuesday falls on. Um, which. You'll be here in uh, the last one of the month before we go to Gambino family, Paul Castellano, Uh next week. But before that, we got another murder. Um, Well, this one's, uh, I guess technically it's classified as a disappearance because it's never been, uh, nobody's been formally charged for her, but Uh there is some sad murder-suicide afterwards that uh, the dad's a piece of shit. Let's just put it that way. Most likely killed her as well. We're talking about Susan Marie Powell. Who disappeared and was presumed to murder in December of 2009. Um, Susan's husband, Joshua, was named a person of interest, but never charged. He ended up uh, having a custody battle with her parents and was a little bitch and killed their two sons and himself before Whoa. anything could happen. So uh, we'll get into all that whole story, all that. We're going to cover all that before all that happens. Go check out our YouTube at Bang Dang Network. When we post full episode shorts, clips, and our YouTube exclusive Dart League. Also, if you guys are interested, well, there's a link in the uh, description. If you guys want to sign up for our ad-free um, shows, two bucks a month for Spreaker supporters, I think it's called. I don't know. We're new to it. Just got accepted to it. So link in the description. Click it. Check it out. If you want to sign up for it, you get the episode ad-free plus a day earlier than this version. So Mondays instead of Tuesdays, no ads whatsoever. And if you don't, then just listen to the one with ads. Either way, you're supporting us. So there you go, huh? Also, Spotify, Apple, give us a review and answer that Spotify question. Well, we're going to start out this one. You know how we usually roll. uh, Get a couple um, profiles of the victim and possible suspect. Well, the suspect in the uh, child murder. But Joshua Powell, born January 20th, 1976, to Stephen and Terrica Powell in Pulliup, Washington. The Powell household was deeply dysfunctional, oh, here we go, due to Stephen's violent abuse of his family and his dissatisfaction with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Well, there's there's an underlying (laughs) issue. LDS, huh? Explains everything. (laughs) According to divorce filings by Tarika in 1992, Stephen shared pornography with Joshua and his two brothers and refused to teach or enforce limits on soy and behaviors. As a teenager, Joshua allegedly killed gerbils belonging to one of his sisters. He also threatened his mother with a butcher knife. Uh, didn't uh, Ted Bundy like place butcher knives on his aunt's bed or something like that? No, that was or his cousin's bed or something. No, it was, not Ted Bundy. It was, it was Ted Bundy. Uh, it was that one kid. Uh, no, was that Dahmer? No, well, yeah, it was Dahmer. Yeah, uh, he, she was like, yeah, she's like, take him back in the kitchen. Back in the kitchen. He also attempted suicide at least on one occasion. Late 1990s, Joshua was living in Tacoma as a student at the University of Washington. It was here that he began a relationship with a woman named Catherine Terry Everett, whom he met at a local LDS church <laughs> congregation. They've got to have LDS in Washington? Of course, why not? I didn't know that. I thought they it was have, usually a... They uh, have them here. A Utah. They have them they here. Have LD- yes, they do. Church of Latter-day Saints. They used to yeah, they walk do. around the damn neighborhood all the time. Yeah, but they don't have the... What's the one? Sister wives and all that? Mormons. Yeah, but it's not LDS. It's a. It's Mormons. That's what these guys are. Yeah, but they're not that kind of Mormon. LD. The Latter Day Saints actually frown upon polygamy. Well, they should, anyways. I don't know. Right. Don't know. Well, after the two men, after the two moved into an apartment together, Joshua exhibited possessive behavior towards Everett. She later recalled he refused to allow her to visit her family by herself, and added, "He would have restrictions and limitations on what I could and couldn't do when it came to my family." Yep. Whenever it visited a friend in Utah without Joshua, she decided not to return to Washington and broke up with him over the phone. And then he met Susan Cox, who was a classmate at his LDS Church Institute of Religion course. 
during a dinner party at his Tacoma apartment in November 2000. Oh, that's fantastic. Right, move down real quick, huh? Well, I, I'm, well, she's lucky. Everett is. That possessive guy usually ends up to like stalking her and murdering her. And how old are they right now? It well, can't be more than... This is 2000. He was born in 76, so 25, 26. And that's where they're past that stage where they had to go do their mission or whatever. And walk the streets. That depends and, on how submerged in the religion they were. All right. And then do the court and all that good stuff. Yeah, it's weird. The two began a relationship and married in the Portland, Oregon Temple, April 2001. Joshua had a bachelor's degree in business, and he worked for a number of different companies over the years. Susan, trained cos- cosmetologist, took up a job with Wells Fargo Investments after the family relocated to West Valley City, Utah, okay. a suburb of Salt Lake City. Of course. The Powells had two sons, Charles, born in 2005, and Braden in 2007. Well, these guys just seem like a little happy family. Wait a minute. Oh, Susan Cox, Susan Powell. All right. All right. Well, for a brief period following their wedding, Joshua and Susan lived with Steve, which were her father-in-law, in South Hill, Washington. Stephen developed an obsessive infatuation with Susan and followed her around the house with a camcorder. Whoa. He used a small mirror to spy on her while she used the bathroom, stole her underwear from her laundry, read her journals, and posted love songs online under a pseudonym. What? Jeez. 2003, Stephen confesses Armour's feelings to a stunned Susan who rejected him. The encounter was inadvertently captured by Stephen's camcorder microphone. The Powell's moved out of state soon after, partly so Susan could distance herself from Stephen. Well, her, her, husband, her husband didn't, like, beat the shit out of right. her or something. Jeez. Susan's journal entries and email correspondence indicated the presence of marital discord. There was tension with Joshua over his refusal to attend church services with his family and over his continued contact with Stephen, no, despite right his father's ongoing advances. Clearly he didn't care. Wow. Susan's friends also pointed out that Josh was uh, extremely controlling. Uh, yeah, Susan's friends also pointed out Joshua's extremely controlling behavior towards his wife and his extravagant spending habits. He filed for bankruptcy in 2007, declaring over $200,000 in debt. Yeah, because everybody thinks they need a, a six-bedroom house and five cars. Susan recorded a video in July of 2008 surveying property damage she attributed to uh, Joshua. And he wrote, and she wrote a secret will that included the statements, I want it documented that there is extreme turmoil in our marriage. If I die, it may not be an accident, even if it looks like one. Hmm. Well, on that very morning of December 6, 2009, Susan, Charles, and Braden attended church. A neighbor visited them at home that afternoon, leaving about 5 p.m. This was the last time Susan was seen by someone from outside the Powell household. At first, relatives reported the entire Powell family missing on December 7th. Joshua's mother, Terica, and his estranged sister, Jennifer Graves, went looking for them at their house shortly after being informed that the children had not been dropped off at daycare that morning. Oh, shit. So they end up calling the police after failing to make contact with Joshua or Susan. The police broke into the house, fearing that the family members were victims of carbon monoxide poisoning. They found no one inside, but noticed two box fans blowing at a wet spot on the couch. Susan did not show up at her job on the 7th of December. Her purse, wallet, identification were all found inside the house. Her cell phone was later found in the family's only vehicle. This was a Chrysler Town & Country minivan. Of course it was. Right, <laughs> and uh, that this is the one that Joshua was using. So n- none of them are to be found right now, huh? Oh, no shit. Well, except for later that day, about 5 p.m., Joshua finally returns home with the two boys and was taken to the police station for questioning. He claimed he'd left Susan sleeping at home shortly after midnight, December 7th, and taken his boys on a camping trip to the Pony Express Trail in western Utah. Please visit. Right, where's his... How, yeah, how'd they get there? The only vehicle. Well, probably after he came back. <laughs> Okay. Uh, police visited that area on December 10th, but found no evidence of the campsite that Joshua had described. Well, who leaves at midnight to go camping? Right. Jeez. Just to go there and throw up a tent and go to sleep and we'll come get back up the next and, day. That's stupid. Well, they also found it suspicious that Joshua would take his young boys out camping in blizzard conditions after midnight right. when they were scheduled to go to daycare just hours later. Right. Joshua additionally not told his boss that he would not be coming into work that day. He explained to the police that it was because he had thought it was Sunday rather than... <laughs> Wait, you don't go to work on Monday? Well, he thought it was Sunday. 
Oh, right, right. I thought it was Sunday rather than Monday. Get the hell out of here. Uh, upon searching the Powell residence December 9th, investigators found traces of Susan's blood on the floor. Oh. Life insurance policies for Susan for $1.5 million and a handwritten letter from Susan expressing fear for her life. DNA test results released in 2013 matched one blood sample with Susan, while another sample was determined to come from an unknown male contributor. Mm. So how would... What? How would his DNA not be... Hmm. Hmm. August 2012, West Valley City Police released documents showing Joshua took actions that were regarded as highly suspicious following Susan's disappearance. Well, I would start with the camping trip at midnight, first of all. But right. He liquidated Susan's retirement accounts, canceled her regularly scheduled chiropractic sections. Well, his, her sessions, so obviously. You got to pay a fee if you don't go and show up. So all Right. <laughs> <laughs> And he also withdrew his children from daycare. Well, I mean, I mean, they're grieving. My mom's missing. He had previously spoken to co-workers about how to hide a body in an abandoned mine shaft in the oh, western geez. Utah desert. <sighs> Police then interviewed the couple's, old, couple's older son, Charlie, who confirmed that the camping trip Joshua described did indeed take place. Oh. However, unlike his father, he stated that Susan had gone with him and she did not return. What? Weeks after her disappearance, a teacher reported Charlie had claimed that his mother was dead. Furthermore, Susan's parents, Chuck and Judy, claimed that while at a daycare several months after the disappearance, Braden drew a picture of a van with three people in it and told carers mommy was in the trunk. Oh, no. What the hell? Dude, kids don't make up shit like How that. How the hell is this guy not charged? Right. Holy, everything already points to it before even that. Investigators informed the media that they planned on questioning Joshua again. Well, you don't inform the media. <laughs> right. They subpoenaed all footage and interviews, which are aired and unaired, of Joshua from local television stations. 14th of December, Joshua retained an attorney in connection with the investigation. Well, no more talking to him. Yeah. Popo said that he grew increasingly uncooperative. A few days later, Joshua took his sons to Poly Up, uh, Utah, to stay with his father, Stephen, for the holidays. By December 24th, Christmas Eve, Joshua was considered a person of interest in the investigation. That well, should have been that very same day. January 6, 2010, Joshua returned with his brother, Michael, to pack the family's belongings, indicating that he was getting the hell out of Dodge and moving up the poil up for good. For good. Well, there, Joshua occupied a home with his two sons, his father, his brothers, Michael and Jonathan, and his sister, Alina. Hmm. Sounds like a family I know. Uh, <laughs> Joshua indicated that he would rent out his house in Utah. It was reported that he returned to Puyallup after he had lost his job. Soon afterwards, the website SusanPowell.org was launched, described as the official website of Susan Powell. The site's anonymous entries defended Joshua as the victim of a smear campaign by Susan's family, his estranged sister Jennifer, and the LDS church. I mean, LDS is, they are some, man. I mean, come on, though. Smear campaign. Hmm. LDS, bud. Well, he clearly murdered her. <laughs> Right. Additional polls also speculated that Susan's disappearance was connected to that of Stephen Kocher, a former journalist who had vanished in Nevada the same week as Susan, and that the two had run off to Brazil together. <laughs> Joshua and Stephen, what? Did, they, did she know this guy? I don't know. Where, where is he a journalist at? If he's cross-country, then. <laughs> he vanished in Nevada. Right. I mean, he's not that far from Utah. Disappearance of Stephen Kocher. Where did he live? Parked at the end of a cul-de-sac. Got out of his car. After returning, he retrieved something from the vehicle, walked away. He had not been seen since. Oh, he's another Mormon. He went to bring him young. Uh, he's from Amarillo, Texas. Went to the University of Utah, so he must have been around there, huh? Yeah, Salt Lake City and stuff, so maybe they didn't know each other. I'm sure they did. Oh, shit. Maybe that did happen. Hmm. Hmm. Doubt it. <clears throat> yeah, so they think they went off to Brazil. Joshua and Stephen were widely believed to have written these posts. <laughs> Late 2010, both men claimed that Susan had abandoned her family due to mental illness and that she had left with another man. Susan's family rejected these claims as being unsupported and absurd by any evidence. Investigator scrutiny <laughs> extended to Stephen upon learning from a family friend that he had been obsessed with his son's wife. Right. Right. Computer images seized from his house in 2010 turned up 4,500 images of Susan taken without her knowledge, oh including close-ups of specific body parts. Maybe he did it. Maybe. 
when dad's there, the that's why they had husband's the, like uh, covering for him or well, something. Well, no, because the DNA of undocumented or whatever it was, they would still have his DNA because they're right. father's son, right? Right. So. Police also turned their attention to Michael after learning that he had sold his broken down Ford Taurus to a wrecking yard in Pendleton, Oregon. Well, why wouldn't he? In Oregon? Oh. Shortly after Susan's disappearance and had later ordered satellite images of the lot. And Michael was that guy. When police found the car, a cadaver dog indicated that decomposing human remains had been in the trunk. DNA tests on the car proved inconclusive, what, though. The journalist guy? No. Who's Michael? Michael's the Joshua's brother. 14th September 2011. Utah authorities discovered a possible gravesite while searching Topaz Mountain, a desert area near Nephi, Utah, that Joshua also had visited often as a campsite. There were signs of recent soil disturbance and shoveling. But after digging a few feet down, police were unable to find any remains. In spite of, maybe they went, maybe he actually went six feet. <laughs> you know? Right. In spite of careful shifting of the soil, federal anth- anth- anthropologists also ruled out the possibility of the site being an in- ancient burial ground. Police continued to examine the site for a time, but offered no explanation as to why they previously announced the finding of remains when no one had actually found any remains. Hmm. Right. Authorities said they were following a scent detected by the sniffer dogs. <laughs> so no remains. Our relations between and within the Powell and Cox families became increasingly hostile. I bet. After the police raided their home in 2011, both Joshua and Stephen spoke to major news outlets regarding journals that Susan had allegedly written about the relationship between Stephen and herself. I mean, come on. Stephen claimed that he and Susan had been falling in love prior to her disappearance, and he cited the content of the journals written when Susan was a teenager as evidence to support his theory that she was mentally unstable and could have run away with another man. Oh, whatever. She even wrote in her will. Did they say that? So now he's claiming... So the dad's claiming they were falling in love? What the hell's going on? Couldn't she put it in her will that if something were to happen to her, she'd want the insurance money to go to her kids and not her husband? And they're like going to a trust fund until they're like 18 oh, yeah, or something? the will still has to be notarized and stuff. Just because she wrote it doesn't mean it's official. It's true. Was it notarized? I doubt it. A judge issued a permanent injunction forbidding Joshua and Stephen from publishing any material from Susan's journals, ordering the pair to either return or destroy any journals already published. Second, 22nd of September, Stephen was arrested on charges of voyeurism and child pornography. Oh, my gosh. Oh, child pornography after the police found evidence that had secretly videotaped young girls and numerous women, including Susan. John Long, Assistant Attorney General for Washington State, said that Joshua was a subject in the child pornography investigation. Sick bastards. Well, a friend of Stephen claimed that he was preoccupied with pornography and was hung up on Susan sexually. Stephen's father filed for custody of her children the day after Stephen was arrested. Or Susan's father. Damn right. Uh, a Washington court eventually granted Cox temporary custody of the boys, ruling that Joshua would have to move out of Stephen's home if he wanted to regain custody. Right. You can't leave him with a right. pedophile or a sexually whatever the fuck you want to call him piece of shit joshua rented a house in south hill but authorities later alleged that he never actually moved into that house uh, merely making it appear as if he had satisfied the court's instructions while continuing to reside at stephen's home why would he do why would you stay there when dude, you get, this dude is like brainwashed or something by the stephen guy the stephen guy was probably fucking him yeah, and his brothers the whole time be on this i want to watch it i don't know this is ridiculous Late, se- se- bloom. <laughs> Late September 2011, Joshua's sister, Jennifer, stated that she believed, oh, Joshua was responsible for his wife's oh, yeah, disappearance. No shit. His other sister, Elena, had been suspicious of him as well. Uh, but then she later withdrew her suspicions and felt that Joshua had been unduly harassed by the investigation. Yeah, after herself being unduly harassed by right. the family, probably. By this time, West Valley City had spent more than a half a million dollars on this case. Mm, and I bet you they're going to be like, well, we're enough for that. September 28, 2011, Mayor Mike Winder indicated that he felt that the case was worth the expense. He stated this, we feel that we are getting to that tipping point where we have more hot evidence than we have had in the past two years. And he says that the case is moving forward. <laughs> I bet it is. 2011, late 2011, Joshua underwent a series of court-ordered evaluations in Washington. The evaluations by James Manley determined that Joshua had adequate parenting skills, a steady employment history, and no criminal record or history of domestic violence. However, Manley also raised issues concerning the ongoing criminal investigations. 
Joshua's failure to admit normal personal shortcomings, his overbearing behavior with his sons, and his persistent defensiveness and paranoia, which was attributed to the police and media attention in conjunction with underlying narcissistic traits. Yeah. Yeah, it's rough. But I mean, well, it's, as long as they got a roof over their head and not being abused, I seen, guess. We've seen the, the system do worse. Right. Well, the, initi- the initial recommendation was for Joshua to have visitation with his son several times a week, supervised by a social worker, of course. In the last week of January 2012, Utah police discovered about 400 images of simulated child pornography, bestiality, and incest on a computer seized from the Powell family home. That's probably Stephen, right? Or I imagine, bro. yeah. The pornography had been cached. Cached? Cached. Cached. The pornography had been cached. When viewed by the previous owner of the computer, what's cached mean? Like, stuffed it away, pretty much. Uh, which you had know, been like geocaching, where you gotta go find the. It's like a, ma- or a scavenger hunt. It's like a cache of weapons or something. You stashed them. Right. And um, they come to find out that this computer was purchased by Susan. And it was a used computer, so. The pornography been- had been cached or cached when viewed. By the previous owner of the computer, um, which had been purchased by Susan secondhand. Right. So the person that had the computer first was doing that. Either that or she found them on her computer one day and stored them away. I don't know. Uh, well, the Utah authorities misled the court and accused Joshua of having viewed these images Maybe. and not the previous owner. Maybe they were well, the images, while not illegal due to them being in a hand-drawn or cartoonish 3D format, oh. were the cause for great concern to Manly, particularly given Joshua's early denial of possessing any such material. Right. Joshua was recommended to receive a more thorough psychosexual evaluation. That's the first time I heard of that. Right. And polygraph tests, Which but Manly suggested nothing. no change in the visitation schedule with the Powell Boys. Right. Meanwhile, Joshua's brother Michael established a Google Sites page that claimed Susan's parents were abusing and neglecting oh, the boys the in conclusion here. with wild, child welfare authorities. Jeez. Your dad's in prison for freaking... I don't even think he's in prison yet. Ridiculous. Uh, Michael also alleged that West Valley City Police had both mishandled the investigation into Susan's disappearance and were harassing Joshua. Lawyers for the Cox family disputed the allegations and Google removed the site after a few days due to violations of his terms of use. Well, of course they did. Why wouldn't they not? 5th of February, 2012, social workers Elizabeth, 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 <laughs> social worker Elizabeth Griffin Hall, she called 911 after taking Charlie and Braden to a supervised visit at their father's Joshua's house in South Hill. Hall, who was supposed to monitor the visit between Joshua and the boys, reported that Joshua grabbed his sons and would not let her through the door. Oh, well. <gasps> Soon thereafter, the house exploded, what? killing Joshua and the two children. What the fuck? What? Wow. Local authorities treated the case as a double murder-suicide, saying that the act appeared to have been deliberate. What the fuck? Well, I think it kind of is. If he grabbed the kids, why would he do that? Uh, when the authorities notified Stephen, who was in jail at the time, he didn't seem very upset by the news, but was angry towards authorities who notified him. Two weeks later, Stephen invoked his Fifth Amendment right to not answer questions regarding Susan's disappearance. Cox and others have stated they believe that Stephen knew what had happened to Susan. Of course he did. Stephen Powell was convicted of voyeurism charges in May 2012, 2012, in a trial which largely skirted the issue of Susan's case. After relatively brief investigations, official confirmed that the explosion had been deliberately planned. Oh my goodness, this guy. Dude, he blew him up. What the Why? Blow yourself up, you piece of shit. Kids had nothing to do with that. What wow. The fuck? Official cause of death for Joshua and the two boys was determined to be carbon monoxide poisoning. Though the coroner also noted that both children had significant chopping injuries on the head and neck. A hatchet was recovered near Joshua's body. Investigators believe, what did they said? Soon after. How far? Well, how much is soon after? I'm sure it was. Like an hour? Maybe. You bad. I mean, it doesn't take very long to take a hatchet out. Maybe. Right. And a hatchet was recovered near Joshua's body. Investigators believe he used the tool to attack the boys before being overwhelmed by smoke and fumes. The fire investigation also found two five-gallon cans of gasoline on the premises, as well as evidence that gasoline had been spread throughout the house. Oh, Jeez. my goodness. How did it explode? Because gasoline is very fucking... Uh, I get it, though. Obviously, it had to have made its way to the furnace or the water heater or something. Right. Uh, friends and relatives of Joshua told authorities that he had contacted them by email minutes before the incident to say goodbye. 
Some of them, including his local bishop, received instructions for finding his money and shutting off his utilities. <laughs> I don't think that matters at this point. Right. Records also show that Joshua had withdrawn. Plus, your utility companies are dicks. They're not going to let her do it. <laughs> right. Like, sir, we need the person that's on the count. <laughs> yeah, like, sorry. Got an outstanding uh, Right. Uh, but that, that's fucked up because the next owners are going to get shafted. Well, I guess there's no next owners. The house is gone. Right. Uh, records also show that Joshua had withdrawn $7,000 from his bank account and had donated his children's toys and books to local charities the day before the incident. Oh, wow. Joshua named his brother Michael as the main beneficiary of his life insurance policy. He's not getting it. Probably not. Life insurance policies don't get paid out for no. people that kill themselves, right. first of all. Charles and Brayden are buried at Woodbine Cemetery, which also contains a memorial for their mother. Joshua's remains were cremated. Mm. That's sickening. 11th February, 2013, approximately one year after the death of Joshua and his sons. Michael Powell killed himself in Minneapolis, where he had moved for graduate school. He jumped from the roof of a parking garage. What the hell? Police had questioned Michael several times in 2012 after discovering his abandoned Ford at the Oregon Wrecking Yard. Police described Michael as evasive about why he left the car at that location. Utah authorities have said uh, that they believe that Joshua and Michael were accomplices in the murder of Susan. Powell. Yeah, I would assume. In February, Her family probably. Yeah. yeah, where's the mom? In February 2013 interview, Manley, who had conducted the 2011-12 evaluations of Joshua for Washington authorities, acknowledged his suspicions that Joshua was involved in his wife's disappearance. Disappearance. However, he did not mention these suspicions in his report because they were beyond the scope of his duties and because Joshua had not been charged with any wrongdoing. Right. May 21st, 2013, West Valley City Police announced that they had closed the active investigation into Susan's disappearance. Yeah, they got enough. Joshua's sister, Jennifer. Didn't, they didn't charge him, though. Right. Joshua's sister, Jennifer, wrote a memoir with co-author uh, Emily Clausen about the Powell family's tumultuous history. The memoir, published in June of 2013, as uh, Let me guess. A it was their upbringing dark that made him the way he was, and it wasn't his fault. He's really a good guy. Well, Fuck out of here. Jennifer was inspired to write the book. Uh, she says to help other people to recognize abuse in either their own relationships or relationships around them because it's not always completely apparent. March 2015, Chuck Cox won a pr protracted court battle with Tarika and Alina Powell over control of Susan's estate. Tarika and Alina. Why would they have it? Right. Had sought to have Susan declared legally dead to collect life insurance. <laughs> But Cox ultimately gained full control of the estate. What a bunch of pieces of shit, right. dude. Guilty the Cox family also sued Washington's Department of Social and Health Services and its social workers, claiming that the agency prioritized Joshua's parental rights over the safety of the boys and facilitated their deaths. It's right. probably true. Yep. 2015, a federal court granted summary judgment to the defendants, ruling that the social workers had immunity. Of course, of course they did. Right. And DSHS was not negligent. Yeah, whatever. 2019, an appeals court partially overturned that decision, ruling that the social workers did have immunity, but the question of DS DSHS's negligence could proceed to trial. Right. Wow. That's trial. Oh, wow. Well, at trial, a jury ruled that DSHS was neg negligent and awarded $98 million to the states of Susan's wow. two sons. Wow. Yeah, they should have never allowed him to have any visitation. And if it was, it should have been at a, uh, like the courthouse or some predetermined place, not his fucking house. Right. Uh, Susan's family also pressured state lawmakers in Washington and Utah to pass bills that would restrict or block visitation rights for parents being investigated for murder. Oh, no shit. Right. Stephen Powell was released from prison July 11th, 2017, after serving a total of seven years following his voyeurism and child pornography. Uh, he died of natural causes in Tacoma in July, two, uh, July 23rd, 2018. This mm. piece of shit. Well, in 2019, something called The Cold Podcast disclosed that the incestuous cartoon porn found by Utah police was not Joshua's, nor even came from his computer. Pornographic pictures were found to be on the computer that actually belonged to Susan, that the pornography had been viewed by the computer's previous owners, fellow members of her LDS church, from whom she had purchased the used computer secondhand from. It makes sense. Cold declined to identify the original owners of the computer because, as the host stated, he had a conflict of interest as an acquaintance of the previous owners. Of what? Oh, my. As well as their shared membership in the church. Uh, no criminal charges have been filed against anyone. Why did they not investigate that? Uh, Hunter Biden all over again. Wow. <laughs> Susan remains a missing person, but given the fates of her sons, is widely believed that she was murdered by her husband, Joshua. Yeah, I would say so. 
There were calls as of March 2018 to have her declared dead, with the cause being homicide. Early 2022, a cave exploration crew led by diesel brothers personality dave sparks took up the challenge of searching a mine shaft in the utah desert in search of susan's remains the team discovered several rib bones possible human vertebrae scraps of clothing and other possible evidence of human remains in the mine shaft the rema- remains were sent to a lab with dna tests concluding that none of the bones belonged to susan but were instead animal remains Pants recovered with the bones, tested positive for male DNA, and the family is trying to identify that man. Did he get eaten by an animal or something? In a mine shaft? Well, that's a whole other separate case, I guess. <laughs> uh, wow. Wow. See, another failure on, um, well, this time, I, I guess not law, but the, the state and the, the, part of the, the system in, in general, dude. Part of the government. Come on, man. Like That's a government agency that's fucking up again. Those kids should have never even been allowed to even be with their dad after he's investigated for murder. Ridiculous. After all this shit. Plus, the house that the, uh, the house that I'm sure they didn't even probably say this, the house that they're taking him to after he was ordered to move out, even though the guy was in jail for the pornography shit. He was still living in that house. That's right. the house that they took him to. Right. I mean, come on, dude. Jeez. $98 million, though. Good for uh, Susan Cox family. Jeez. Oh, sad, man. Kind of ridiculous. Kind of. Oh, okay. Never mind. I was wrong about the house. He moved to Washington. Yeah, so the, the claims of that of her running away with that journalist is unsubstantiated. This guy's never been found either. Garbage. He probably killed himself. Hmm. <laughs> Either that or change his identity or something. Said, bye, I'm out of here. I mean, it's all part of the LDS. They're known for corruption and allegedly. scandals. They're allegedly known for corruption and scandals. <laughs> they're a, a minor version of the Scientologists. They're not a minor. They're a major version. Mm, well. You ever seen their church? It's the size of a freaking city. Actually, they have are their own pretty much town. It's ridiculous, and they will protect anybody that's in their church. Well, they have their own university. They have everything. Yeah, I don't know. Obviously, the guy killed her. Yeah, but it's a weird stuff. How do you how do you let the kids go with the dad though after that? And not only that, to send uh, okay, no offense against females, but how do, you, <laughs> how do you send a female social worker? All right, come on to a murder. Murder suspect. That's a that, male that murdered his wife. Potentially, right? right. Come on, dude. Jeez. And his family, or at least his dad, is is a known predator of taking pictures of females oh, and my shit. Goodness, come on. Uh, just total failure again, dude. Holy shit! How much time do if how many times are, do we have to do failures? And like if you this? are gonna send her, at least send like a patrol car, something. Just, or like I said, have the damn uh, uh, visitations at a courthouse or something. Right. Jeez, I don't know. Yeah, well, that wasn't uh, as mysterious as I thought. That escalated quickly. <laughs> it was like, she's disappeared, then boom, house explodes. All right. Pretty much. But, uh, hey, what are you going to do? Uh, but I guess it's still an active case, since she's not a fair uh, declared officially dead. So They closed the case, though. That's true. But it can always be reopened. It's a cold case. It's a cold case. No, she's cold. Um, we'll be back next week for Mafia Time and the Gambino family, which will be covering Paul Castellano. Oh, we know what happened to him. He, Poor guy. He, yeah, he got moited. Moited. I found everything I could about this guy, and it's still not much of a long episode. But uh, he is the successor to, obviously, Gambino. And right after him is the infamous John Gotti, who will be covering next month. But um, I mean, it's your usual mob story. Nothing, yeah. You know, did bad stuff, got killed. You know. What are you going to do? Extortion, all that good stuff. So we'll have some of that, and we'll see you next week for Gambino uh, shenanigans. We are the Mother Michiganders. We are. Ding, ding.